Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm your host, Mark Spencer, and joining me today is once again, Steve Martin. Hey, Steve. Hey, Mark. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So we're going to talk about, we're actually going to overlap a little bit into, well, your territory, making things move. Making things move. I like to make things move. You do? Yes. And so, you know, with motion, um, people just say, I'll just do it in motion. Well, there's a lot of stuff you can still do in Final Cut. A ton of stuff you can do right in Final Right, because maybe you don't want to go over to motion to do a simple animation. And I'm going to show you some time-saving shortcuts today that will really make your life easier. Yeah, so in fact, before motion existed, I I did a ton of this in Final Cut. There's a a great deal of motion graphics you can do right here. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's just start with some basic motion skills. Now, I have this clip here, this this ESPN show, uh, Speed Freaks. I'm going to go ahead and open the clip into the viewer and click the motion tab. Notice I have image and wireframe turned on okay. so, so you can see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Now, let's just say I wanted to create like a, I don't know, like a 24 type opening where you have multiple images kind of moving around. Moving places. around screen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the way normally people approach this is that they'll scale, uh, the scale the video. I'm going to just type in 50% uh, for the scale. And then they'll set, the, and, and they'll set a keyframe here. And then they'll set a keyframe for center point, which is position. You know, okay. they call it center and finally not position right. like they do in other apps. Huh. But uh, then I would have to move it up here. So there's, I'm, I'm only scaling and moving. And the, the point to know here is that, notice the anchor point is in the center, as you can see by the wireframe. Yes. So everything scales around the center scales point. Scales around its anchor point. Scales and rotates. Right, right but that's not, always, that's not always the best. Sometimes you might want it to scale off of a corner. Um, maybe okay. the left, left or right corner. I'm going to go ahead and reset this. And there's two ways to actually change the anchor point. Okay. Um, one way is to do it visually in the canvas. Now, uh-huh. if I, I get the distort tool down here in the tool palette. So the distort dis- tool? Distort. Okay. And it's really odd. You get a distort tool to change to the, the anchor, anchor point. point. Yeah. Right. I mean, normally you would, you know, put it on the edge of a... Oh, because you can you, use it to you, distort the... Yeah, clip. you can yeah. make your clip rubbery. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but uh, I'm not going to make my click rubbery. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to notice how when I put the distort tool in the center of the wireframe, it you get the distort, which is weird. But notice I drag out that little dot. That little line, yeah. That's what that is. That's, that's the anchor that's point. That's the anchor point. Okay. So I can put it, let's say, up there in the okay. upper left. And now when I scale, no, notice where it's scaling. It scales from. from that anchor point. That yeah. stays dead still. So yeah. it's, it can looks it can look like it's growing out from the corner. Exactly. Okay. Now that's. You know what? That's great, but it's not exactly precise, okay? Um, there's a more precise way to do it. And I'm going to go okay. ahead and reset, that, reset this. And it's actually put in values because how do, you might be off a few pixels right, right. in the corner. So, right. But then, you know, well, I, I don't know what even what number to put in there. Well, it's very simple. Um, if you open the distort, this gives you – it's like a key. Um, okay. Before I open it, let me tell you that the image that we're working with is 720 by 46. Let's say what they call a D1 right. broadcast resolution. Definition. Right. But here's it, this works with any clip. Okay. If I open the distort tool, it gives you, you some clue about it. Like, for example, minus 360, 360 is half of what? Oh, it's going to be half of its uh, upper left corner. It's width or its height. I don't know. Width. Width. 720. Okay. 720 by 46. Right. And this sure. would be, and that'd be half of 46. 46. Uh-huh. So, so to, to actually have it scale, um, you put in the anchor point, you put minus 360 minus 243. So, so it's, move it over 360 so and up to 243. That's right. So, okay. right. Because it's minus up up this way and then over 243. Okay. So minus would be that direction. Okay. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put minus... Um, 360, and then tab over. I'm going to put. And we see it um, jumped over already. Right, when you did that. Yeah, you can see it. Uh-huh. And then minus 243. Now, when I use the scale, see, now, it, now, now it's it scales perfect. perfectly right. from that corner. So what I'm what okay. I'm saying is, you can use the, open the distort, and you can get like a little key about what Great. to set your anchor yeah, point yeah. at. Yeah, it gives you that information. Absolutely. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this back to 100 percent. And I'm going to set a keyframe right at the start of the clip. I'm going to set a keyframe for okay. scale. I'm going to set a keyframe for anchor point. And then oh. I'm going to move the playhead forward one second by holding it on the shift, tapping my right arrow. Shift, shift right, right arrow. arrow moves it one second. One second, okay. Now, um, I'm just going to change the scale now um, to 50. Now, I don't have to put another keyframe. It Final Cut assumes I Final want a keyframe there. That. Right. So now, though, now, I've, now I have it scaling up in the corner over one second. I see. see that? Yep. Now, the neat thing is, I don't want to have to, I know I'm going to do this for other clips. Why? I don't want to have to reinvent this wheel, set up those keyframes every time. I could say this as a motion favorite. 
oh, and then so reapply it's it. in motion. You can you can save this thing. You don't have to do this work over again. Right. Okay. So how do you do that? So what you do is make sure the viewer is selected like it is. Okay. So in other words, it's you're telling Final Cut that's what I want to save. Uh -huh. and then go to the effects menu and go down and choose make favorite motion. Make favorite motion, meaning the motion tab, things on the motion What's tab. What's inside the motion tab. Okay. And notice Control F is a shortcut. And uh, if I go to the effects tab in the browser, there it is right there. Notice what it, um, there it kind of gave it the name of the clip oh, that it I gave applied it the name it to. of the clip. Okay. And then I can name it whatever I want. I can call it, you know, scale upper left. In this case, what was it? Upper, yeah, upper left. Upper I might left. just, I uh -huh. might just say uh, upper left. Now, the reason I'm, not being too descriptive about it, because obviously I've, I've, already, I've already done yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead. Martha Stewart, you. Yeah, my Martha, exactly. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Because what I want to show you is how you can take those presets and apply them. Here I have a stack of four video layers. Okay. Okay. And let's say I want to just. And these are raw. You they're just raw. There's, there's nothing applied to them. And let's okay. just say I want, I already have a, my motion favorite scale upper right. Okay. I'm just going to drag that and drop that on, on the clip here. Right. Now, as you can see, it's a preset. You can see that top clip is scaling. It's not scaling. It's scaling. Okay. Now let's say I want to do a scale. It was a scale upper upper right, and I want to do scale upper left. So I just drag one. that and just drop 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 that on that one. Okay. And now we've got two clips: one scaling on the upper right, and, and one, one upper scaling left. Upper, upper left. That, that's the snowboarder scaling upper. You see that? Yep. Now the neat thing about this: watch how easy it is to change the timing because the timing is it right about how these com are coming right, in? Right, right. They're a little bit different than each other. Right. So if you if you click this toggle keyframe button over this, what I call the racing stripe button, green and blue racing stripe, okay. you can actually see the keyframes oh, on your key the clip. Oh, there's yeah. right in the timeline. So you could see them up in the motion tab of the viewer, but here you can see them in relationship to each other. Exactly. Okay. And you gotta, you got to understand, very much like motion, those keyframes, that each of those keyframes could represent more than one property. Yes. So in this case, those keyframes represent both the scale and the pos and the anchor, anchor point, point properties. Okay. So let's say I wanted to start. By the way, if you put your mouse between the two keyframes, you get like a drag icon. Notice I can slide both keyframes oh, earlier or later. Oh, okay. You don't have to drag each one separately. Right. They're staying in tandem and they're staying the exactly. same distance from each yeah, other. Yeah. So I can start here and then let's say maybe I can like offset that one a little bit there. And so when I play this, I, I, I can create different. I can create interesting effects. I can control each coming in so at their own time. Okay. Each coming in at their own time. So there, there you have it. Um, so you're very and, easy. And what's, and and what's nice is look at they're perfectly aligned and registered. Yep. I, I'm not worried that they're not. I have to go in there and yep. because the anchor point controls the fact that they're scaling. And you're perfectly. playing back with uh, preview. You're playing back in real time. Real time. And looking at this. Exactly. Wow. So I might have to do more of this work in Final Cut. I would have gone to motion, but you're just right here, and you're already working here. And especially when you've saved those uh, favorites, I very not, quick in my easy. favorites in my favorites folder. I have probably 50 different presets wow. of all kinds. I just drop, just drop on drop things. On. Like for example, you might want to just have like a hold position where something's in the center, and you yeah. just drop it on. It just holds there. Okay, like a freeze frame. Like kind a freeze of thing? frame. Okay. Yeah. So there's all kinds. Any look. The thing about this is. Anything in the motion tab can be saved as a motion favorite, even if it doesn't have animation on it. Okay, so even like I know retiming is in the motion tab, right? Ti uh, time remapping. So it's the speed, I guess it's called speed here, but what you know I call what? time remapping? I haven't tried that. I bet it would work. It's a motion tab. You could probably save that as a favorite. It'd be something to try. Something to try, okay. Exactly. Well, good. Maybe for next time. All right. Excellent, Steve. So um, if Folks want to learn more about Final Cut and all the amazing things you can do with it, they can go to R I P P L E. Oh, <laughs> RippleTraining.com. RippleTraining.com. Great, Steve. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.